Hi, this is TJR. I'm a musician and a music writer. And this is Robert Kinsler, and I'm a music writer and a musician. And we're doing something a little different this time. Normally, if we like talk about a big album, we both go listen to it separately. We get the CD when it comes out and, or stream it when it comes out and we uh, then talk about it later. But in this case, we have access, we've been given an advanced stream. We have of the new album, uh, the forthcoming album from Greta Van Fleet, which is titled Anthem of the Peaceful Army. Yes. And so as we're recording this right now, it is Wednesday the 17th, and the album comes out this coming Friday. And so another thing that we're going to do differently is we're going to just listen to this uh, one track at a time, and then we're going to just give our initial reactions. Normally, of course, we've lived with the albums a little bit. We've maybe heard the songs numerous times, but we're going to just give just our initial first reaction as we hear each song. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, listen to the first track, which is entitled... Age of Man. Age of Man. Awesome. Let's check it out. So we just got done listening to the first track on Anthem of the Peaceful Army. But before we kind of give our opinions on that, let's talk a little bit about the band, just so when we refer to them going forward, everybody knows who we're talking about. Greta Van Fleet is a quartet out of Michigan. It features three brothers and their friend. Uh, on lead vocals is Josh Kishka. On uh, guitar is Jake Kishka. On bass and keyboards is Sam Kishka. And their friend is uh, Danny Wagner, or Wagner. We're not, probably Wagner, and it's uh, W-A-G-N-E-R, and he's on drums. That's right, yeah. The Wagner, Va Wagner Wagner difference depends on where you hail from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's from Germany, which he probably is, and it would be Wagner, yeah. like the composer, but it's probably Wagner since he's in the U.S. More than likely. More than likely. <laughs> if we messed up your name, we apologize. Yeah, we definitely do. So let's talk about this first track, Age of Man. And I'll start off. Yeah, okay. sounds good. Um, first of all, I was very surprised by the symphonic intro. I was not expecting that. I was expecting the album to start with a big bang of mm -hmm. some sort. And it was a good surprise. Uh, it, it, uh, it defied my expectations in a good way. I was very pleased with that. I'm going to say something critical about the vocals during this section. And once again... These are my first impressions. We've only heard this once. And I reserve the right to change my mind if, uh, after a couple more listens if I think differently about it. But first impression, I kind of felt like um, the lead vocalist's voice was just too high, just too falsetto during that – just during that section, almost to the point of parody. That was just mm -hmm. my thought. Now, after, once the band riff comes in, I was very impressed – with the band riff once it gets started. And then I was, then, like I said, I had no problem with his vocals uh, or the rest of the band for that matter. Um, so I'm going to stop now and let okay. you talk. I'll just say overall, my impression like, was like, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, everything I've kind of built up in my own mind about how great this young band is. Mm -hmm. Just in this one song, I felt like all those hopes, all those, mm -hmm. you know, uh, beliefs that this this band is something different from so many other mm -hmm. young rock bands in 2018 mm -hmm. was delivered. Like you're saying, you might hear little things here and there, but the guitar, the vocals, the ambition, some of the different parts of the song, it's the lack of just repetitive, repetitive, you know, like like a one four five corporate. I mean, just everything about it defies kind of what you would think a young band would be doing. And, and I just loved it. And, and I need to probably go back and listen to, like you were, to some of the vocal. I was just kind of overwhelmed almost by just how great the song sounded. And I don't want my negative, my one critical comment to come off the wrong way as if I did not like the song. I feel very much the way you do about it. I'm surprised and impressed by the level of complexity mm -hmm. that these young kids are playing with. I'm completely impressed with their composition skills on mm -hmm. this song. And I'm assuming they've written all the songs themselves. Yeah. I'm assuming. But the level of composition skills, the level of creativity, ingenuity, not relying on the same chord patterns yeah. that everybody's always relying on in popular music these days, 
outstanding. In oh that yeah, regard. and it, it's almost like you you almost can't believe it. Like your brain keeps trying to say, "Is this a band that I missed somehow?" You know, on the classic rock station or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But it's it's true. These these guys, it's very exciting. You know, and I can't wait to hear and the rest just of the kids. album. And they're just kids. Yeah, I At think so. Point. Is the oldest one even 21, 22 or something, something? like I that. I mean, crazy how, I mean, you no. think about how young they are. It's, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, it defies you. You know, I mean, there's, and I don't want to say like boy band. There's, there's young musicians that maybe they're trying to, go for the lowest common denominator that don't have a, 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 a one-hundredth of the amount of talent that we heard in this one song. It's very, yeah. Ex- yeah. very exciting. This level of inventiveness and creativity. Yeah, how did you think this up, in other words? Yeah, how exactly. Like, up? where did this come from? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's check out the next track. Okay. And that's a track entitled The Cold Wind. Track two, here we go. Okay, and uh, now we're back after hearing uh, The Cold Wind. Again, I was blown away. This, this song is a little bit closer to kind of what I would say is the signature sound of somebody like Zeppelin. Yes. I think it taps into that. But you, I can't name a, any song that they took from or sounds like it lifted. It's like as if Led, it was an outtake from the Led Zeppelin's uh, physical graffiti or something. Yes. You know? Yeah, that was... And, and I want to say... This is how I this track here, track two, the cold wind is how I expected the album to start. Right, I expected it to start with this. I know you did. <laughs> yes, and I. But this was a really yeah. I dug this first of all. Oh. I dug the hell out of this track. Yeah. Yes, it sounds like something off of physical graffiti. This is an extremely Zeppelin like track, and of course that's the big controversy with Great Event Fleet is how much they sound like Led Zeppelin. But while this song feels like a lost Led Zeppelin song, I can think of no Led Zeppelin song that I could say, oh, they ripped that track off. Yeah. No, it's not there. Yeah, it we're just, in uniform agreement because yeah. I'm with you. There's not a single song that this sounds like. You you don't hear this and say, oh, it, they it, they just capture the sound. They capture the, and the, the feel. Sty- and the feel and, and the, the style. style yeah. But I'll tell you, it's so authentic. They're, they don't sound like they're they're ripping anybody off. It's great. It's, you know? it's as if, um, you know, if, if you were to say, uh, you know, hey, we, we need a, Zepp- a Zeppelin-like song. We need to sound as much like Zeppelin as possible, but you can't copy any Zeppelin song. This is the most um, – This I would say if that was deliberate, uh-huh. then this is the most amazing accomplishment, accomplishment yeah. if that was the case. If, if, yeah. if they were actually told, you know, you need to copy Zeppelin but not copy them and it has to feel exactly authentic – then this is the best version of that yeah. that I could think of. And you because, know, and you know what struck me on this? There was just one part where I think the song kind of the dynamics went down, and then there's the, the guitar going along, this great riff in there. Yeah. And then the the vocalist comes in, and I'm going, "Oh my god, this is so awesome!" How they do these little touches. Yeah. And it's so seamless and so effortless, and it, it's just like you're just mesmerized. You know, yeah. I just, you know, just love this song. And and again. The Cold Wind, I'm going to be hit and repeat on this when I do get the CD Me when too. it's available. Me too. I also want to say just there's a section in the middle, the instrumental section, where Jake uh, Kiska does a, I guess we would call it a vocal solo. Yeah. That's in the same cool. way that the guitars yeah. might do a guitar solo. The guitarist joins him afterwards, but um, but he does a vocal solo there. And after my negative comment on the last song, my one critical comment, I want to say... He does a great job with this vocal solo uh-huh. in the middle of the song. So I just wanted to say, yeah, that. that was a great part. Too. Yeah, now that you're saying that, it's like, and, and that's what I mean. It, it's like here we are. We've only heard the song one time. Yeah, it's our first and time, it, and it just grabs you, and that's an accomplishment. It is, you know. So is. Uh, well, I think this track was better than the advanced tracks. I do too. Yeah, yeah, I really like Speaking it. Speaking of which, the next track is an advanced track when the curtain falls, and so we're going to listen to that again just yeah. to refresh our memories. Yeah, let's do that and come back and comment. Here we go. Okay, so we're back now. We've just listened to When the Curtain Falls. And real quick, I just want to state, I believe on the last track, I misidentified the lead vocalist as Jake Kishka, who's the guitarist, versus Josh Kishka, who is the vocalist. My apologies on that. And now let's talk about uh, track three, When the Curtain Falls. And of course, we both heard this before as an advanced track. Been loving that one for the last few weeks. It's a great it's, song. It's a solid track. Yeah. It's a really good track. But I'll tell you, 
the cold wind is a better track. I, I do agree with that. Yeah. And I'm not just saying I agree with you. The, but when the curtain falls, you know, I think the things that I like most about it that I want to mm-hmm. hear what you have to say is just some of the kind of me- musical interplay about like the way the guitar and the bass sometimes will lock in like the guitar might start like a riff or mm-hmm. something and then the bass locks in and they're locked in with the in a, with the, the drums and it's just great to hear uh, as these guys become more familiar and better musicians, how they are just playing so much like a yeah. great band. They, they're just in the pocket rhythms and everything. And that's what excites me most about this song. Yeah. this No, this is a very good song. One thing I'm going to bring up, of course, this is another very Zeppelin-like song. And in fact, gosh, the Jimmy Page guitar riffs, mm-hmm. the, just the sound, the way the lead sounds. Um but one thing I wanted to say was that uh, Zeppelin off on times would defy expectations by not doing what you'd predict to happen when you heard a song based on everything else you were hearing on the radio at that time. And there's a point there during the first line of lyric where the lead singer, um, Josh, does a, a little vocal melody, and then I expect him to immediately sing the next line of verse where you would normally do that in a song. And instead, he pauses. There's no, there's no line. Then he comes in when you don't expect it. Uh-huh. Zeppelin was, was always doing things like that with their songs. It always made them harder to cover because y- you'd expect certain things to fall a certain way as to where you land a certain line of lyric or where you land a certain note. And they would just decide, you know, on the third verse, let's just do it this way instead. So it'll uh-huh. be a little bit different. And I noticed him doing that with the vocals. And uh-huh. it's just those little things that keep things from being predictable. And predictable is too much of what we have in a lot of today's music. And at least a lot of today's ra- music on the radio. So right. once again, uh, kudos on that. Um, anything else you want to say before we get to the next no, one? No, no. Just, uh, I mean, I've been enjoying that track. It's nice to hear it here. And I uh, look forward to the next track. Okay. The next track is called Watching Over Track 4. We're going to pause and check it out. Here we go. You know uh, that that song's called "Watching Over," and, and that is a song I had heard. That's I know one we're of the kind of going, tracks. In fact, we talked about. Yeah, it. we talked about that. Yeah, so yeah, we didn't see that at first because we had to flip like a page thing here. On, uh, but I'll tell you, I I love that song the first time I heard it, mm-hmm. and I loved it today. And you know what I like about it? The feeling I get is like you're swept up in the music. Mm-hmm. It's like. Um, so much of the music today is overproduced. It's it's like they're trying to be perfect. Every like things sound Everything so predictable. Per- perfect, yeah. yeah. And like there's times his voice is flying off the rail. There's sometimes where the guitar almost sounds like maybe uh, not that he flubbed up, but it's not it's not this precise kind of calculated thing that you might expect. Yeah. But it makes it so real, so authentic, so exciting. Mm-hmm. That you know, and and I know maybe I'm sounding like a broken record here, but I, I just love the approach. I love the abandon of the music. I love it's, kind of the freewheeling spirit of the music. I mean, this is just great, and this song fits be, right in. I'll be honest, Robert. It's good to see you uh, feeling this and enth- see you being this enthusiastic and enjoying something this much. I'm I'm pleased to see it. I feel like I enjoy this track too. I feel it is one of the somewhat less Zeppelin-esque sounding songs mm-hmm. when I first heard it. I felt the beginning of it felt more like Bad Company uh-huh. than Led Zeppelin, which is good, you know. Um, and and there's, you know, this, just that 70s rock sound yeah, yeah. more than anything else. I think it's a good, solid track, real good, solid track. I liked it the first time, too. I like it now. And one thing I noticed more, though, on this listen, I noticed more of the sitar uh-huh. effect on the guitar solo. Yeah. I don't believe he was playing a real sitar. I believe he probably had a like an effects pedal uh-huh. or some uh-huh. kind of a, an effects Yeah, I was almost to ask you about it. Yeah, because it does sound, sound like kind of like a sitar or whatever yeah. you call it. Yeah. Call I, that, uh, yeah. He's just probably got some kind of plug-in yeah. patch or, a, yeah. or an effects pedal and he's just playing guitar but uh-huh. he's getting that sitar sound. I noticed it a lot more this time than on the previous times uh-huh. I'd heard it. I don't know why. Uh-huh. But, um, you know, than I did with the advanced single. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I, I, liked, I liked that an awful lot. And um, once again, I also like the guitar and vocal interplay. Yeah, I at do the too. end mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So we got another track here, and it's entitled "Lover, Lever, Taker, Believer." The moment I read that, all I could think of was the song "Live and Love and Made." For some reason, <laughs> um, just the title evokes that, in my opinion. And um, they're probably tired of hearing these Zeppelin references, yeah. but that's what it made me think. So I have to say what I thought. Let's check this one out. Okay, sounds good. All right, cool. Okay, so first thing I'm going to say, that song sounded nothing like Live and Love and Made. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to first give a shout out to the guitars, number one. Um, I was really, really impressed 
with, of course, I've been impressed with the guitars throughout, but I was really impressed with Jake Kiska's guitars on this one. His um, his guitar soloing, especially, and the the riffs that he was creating for it. One thing that struck me is this song had such an immediate in-your-face compactness to it. I was expecting this to be a shorter song. Mm-hmm. Just a very short, quick, um, as long as we're saying Zeppelin, I'll, I'll say like maybe like... Um, um, Good times, bad times, uh-huh. you know, and I don't think the song sounds anything like that. But I'm just saying, one of the more compact songs, right? You uh-huh. know, more just get in, get out, we're done. Uh huh. You know, and then suddenly it goes into this extended jam. Yeah, it sure does. This extended, uh, somewhat improvised jam. Um, that 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 impressed me too. Yeah. The only critical thing I'm going to say, there was a point. I think it was a, a couple minutes in, and we don't have a timer to to tell us where uh-huh. we are in the track, but. There was this point where, where we heard this this low whoop coming from uh, Josh Kiska's vocals. This oh, where he starts to build up his vocal, you uh-huh. know. And of course, he does a great job with it. But just where it was placed in the song, that was to me following a certain cliche. Uh-huh. That part sounded cliche to me. A lot of bands in the seventies did that trick, you know, during that point in the song, and. That's about the only critical thing I'm going to say. Uh, however, though, I still thought it was a very impressive track. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I can't address that right offhand because it, it's not jumping out at me. But one thing that did strike me uh, on a positive note is what I like is there when there's that long guitar solo at the end where, where he's using the slide. Um, Jake's doing the slide. And then you hear the drummer and bassist behind him. And so many bands would like maybe add a rhythm guitar and this Mm -hmm. and that but it sounds live like this and I love the fact that again so many bands today I mean they just pile on you know the Mm multi-tracks and and it's just in your face and just the uh, and stuff and this sounds like a band like they go into the studio and basically what they do live at rehearsal or what Mm -hmm. they do on the road Mm -hmm. they're delivering that in the studio and doing it with a lot of pomp and stuff and 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 I just that was just very exciting to me you know and as I become more familiar with the song maybe I'll pick up on some of the nuances that you were just talking about but but that's what struck me but but you're right at first when you hear this think it's going to be oh it's going to be a short song it's very ambitious and a lot going on here and there are overdubs in these recordings I can hear them but um, but I think you know and, and there's nothing wrong with overdubs I don't want to say there's anything yeah. wrong with it Led Zeppelin did lots of overdubs yeah. but they found a way to deliver the same thing live mm-hmm. and that was one thing I'll mention because we you know when the curtain falls going back to that track there's overdubs there too but when uh-huh. I watched them play it live on, on, on the Fallon show uh-huh. you know they covered the song they covered it well without bringing any backing tracks yeah. Which once again, you see that with a lot of contemporary artists, they bring they bring backing tracks. They sure do, and yeah. to cover stuff and what they can't perform live, and they just did it live without any backing tracks, and just they found a way to make it work with the four of them, and that's another thing I like about this band. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, let's check out the next track, um, which is called "You're the One." This is track six. We're gonna go listen now. Well, so the, that one's called You're the One, and uh, I'd say that's the most different of all the songs that we've heard so far on the album. You know, it's uh, kind of more of a folk rock song, very acoustic in nature, mm-hmm. um, you know, and like the organ in it very much. Uh, you, you know, it breaks up kind of some of the other songs that we've heard, and, and, it, and very infectious chorus, you it's, know. It's a ballad. Of course, it's it's the first ballad I think we've... We, I think it's the first song we can say is really a ballad. Yeah, on, I would on say that's true. I'll be honest, and once again, it's just my first listen, everybody, mm-hmm. okay? I might change my mind. It's only the first initial reaction. Um, it's hard to judge sometimes on one reaction, but this so far is my least favorite mm-hmm. that I've heard. I'm not saying it's a bad track. It's a nice track. It's a nice enough, enjoyable track, um, but it wasn't really, like, moving me the way a lot of the other tracks were, like, really just grooving me, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. right off the bat, you know? Uh, but, like I said, that's... Uh, that could change after I hear it a few more times and get a little more used to it. Um, very reminiscent of the acoustic Led Zeppelin. Mm-hmm. Very reminiscent of songs like Your Time Is Gonna Come. Mm-hmm. Especially the way the organ sounds reminds me of Your Time Is Gonna Come, even though these are two completely different songs. Right. But texturally, uh-huh. it reminds me of it. Texturally, mm-hmm. it reminds me of it. Um, nice track. Um, kept waiting to like it more and wasn't. 
but I didn't dislike it. So mm-hmm. I just think maybe I need to give it a few more and, and, and like we kind of alluded to in the beginning of, of this episode too, generally, uh, especially kind of my training as a music writer, if you want to say you have to have training, I generally try to listen to albums, if I can, about three times, like like before I would review a particular song. Yeah. To at least three t- Because it's funny, sometimes on a first listen, you have some kind of reception. You might kind of think about it. But it's funny how sometimes a song will kind of, rub you the right way or the wrong way a few more times when you hear it. So I always try to give it the benefit of the doubt. But but I, I would agree with you, at least on this song, mm-hmm. it didn't deter me on a first listen, so that's yeah. good. And I would also add that that's my rule too. Yeah, yeah. And we've got sirens in the background because we live in such a dangerous uh, neighborhood. Yeah, we do, yeah. yeah we're live, <laughs> folks. Um, wait for the sirens. There they go. And I also just want to state that this is my general rule too, Listen to an album or song at least three times before you pass any kind of judgment on it for the exact same reasons you stated. And once again, we're just doing one listen initial reactions. Yeah. I'd say pretty so far this album's yeah. faring pretty well right, on yeah. our initial listen. Yeah. We're going to go to track seven now entitled The New Day. Here we go. Okay, and that was track number seven, The New Day. Mm-hmm. And, you know... Uh, that that's a track that I think I want to hear a couple more times before I say too much. But I like the sweetness of it. There there's a sweet quality about that mm-hmm. song, kind of like a breeziness um, and just a laid back feel. It didn't grab me as much as some of the earlier tracks that we heard, like uh, like the Cold Wind, especially or something like that. But it's not a bad song. But I, I just think I need to spend a little bit more time with it, getting back to kind of our preamble before this track. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually, this is the one I've liked the most since The Cold Wind. Uh-huh. Interesting. Uh, yeah, this is, I've liked this one, I think, the most. And especially out of the first listen tracks, because there are a few that have been advanced singles. Um, I like the very laid back but upbeat vibe mm-hmm. to it. And, and of course, once again, it, this one also, like The Cold Wind, sounds like a lost Led Zeppelin track that was recorded back in the 70s and was hidden in the vault somewhere and just discovered again. Um, it really has that feel to it. But once again, it doesn't it uh, it doesn't directly rip off any particular Led Zeppelin song. It just has that sound and that feel, that texture and that vibe. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one a lot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, that, so let's move on to track number eight, which is uh, Mountain of the Sun. Mountain of the Sun. Let's see what this one's like. Okay, so we're back, and that was track eight, Mountain of the Sun. Um... I'm going to kind of react the way you did on the last track. I'm going to say that I'm going to need to hear this uh, a couple more times before I can really say. This track, honestly, the only thing that was connecting with me on the first listen was the incredible guitar yeah. soloing on it. Lots of cool slide guitar work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the guitar soloing I was very impressed with on this particular one. That's what stood out the most for me. I didn't hate it, objectively hate it, but... It just wasn't connecting with me on this first listen. Once again, I think I'm going to need to hear it more. But what did you think? Yeah, overall, I, I actually enjoyed this song quite a bit. Uh-huh. I, I'm looking forward to hearing it again. But it did connect with me. I really liked it. Liked the vocals. Uh, liked the. Uh, I think there was one part there where there was some really intricate bass work going on, mm-hmm. kind of going on that I found kind of cool. And uh, but again, it's like there's a lot going on. These are not repetitive. Um, you know, by the numbers, no. tunes at all. Certainly so not. I think they do demand a little bit more of a serious listen. Yes, I would agree. So, so uh, but yeah, very excited by it. And it just may need more listens from me before I can really hook into it. I was actually kind of like almost halfway in before I even started to really like kind of groove with it a bit. Uh-huh. But like I said, maybe I need more listens. By the way, you were mentioning the bass, and we have not been talking much about uh, Sam Kiska on bass and Danny Wagner on drums, yeah. and I think we've been kind of overlooking them. Yeah. Uh, but their contributions, I think, have been really incredible to this album, too. Oh, I agree. Um, the way they've locked in. I think they have really upped their game since the last studio released, the two of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially if you, want, once again, watch that performance on Fallon Live, uh-huh. um, where they play When the Curtain Falls, and just the interplay between the drums and bass, the way they lock in with each other and keep that bottom end, especially when the rhythm guitar drops out. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, the guitar solo, they really hold it together extremely well. Yeah, and, and that's so, not easy. No, it's not easy when you don't have that rhythm guitar and they do a good job of it. So I just wanted to bring them up because we have not been talking about them much. So we have our next track here, track nine, uh-huh. track Brave nine. New World. 
I wonder if it has anything to do with the famous science fiction novel of the same name. Well, maybe we'll be able to decipher a little bit after a listen. Let's see. Here we go. I'm really anxious to talk about this track, Brave New World, but uh, it's your turn to start, Robert, so I'm going to have to let you go. Okay. All I can say, can I say it in a word? A one word review? Wow. Okay. I was blown away. I mean, this almost sounds, and it, not a dental, but it almost sounds like Neil Young around the time he did American Stars and Bars on guitar uh-huh. teaming up with Robert Plant or something. I mean, the, this song uh, is, um, you know, it's definitely the sound of Greta Van Fleet. But but the guitar and kind of the style, the song and stuff expands beyond that to almost like Neil Young and Crazy Horse kind of territory a little bit. At least on this initial listen for me, I was. But yeah, I just blown away by the track musically, uh, lyrically. I mean, just this is a song that I'm looking very much forward to hearing again. Yeah, uh, just blown away by. It. But what, what, kind of tell me what your thoughts are. Yeah, I'm chomping at the bit here. This is the most startling track off the album in my opinion, because it's the least Zeppelin-like right. sounding track. Yeah. And if I didn't say uh, that, I meant to, yeah. And it's the least 70s rock sounding uh-huh. track. Um, you mentioned Neil Young and Crazy Horse. I thought this song sounded grunge. Yeah, 90s yeah. grunge. And Neil Young's kind of the father of that, obviously. Yes. Yeah. You know, the way that he would combine really heavy guitar, but also very sonically beautiful. Like, think of Cortez the Killer, or yeah. think of Like a Hurricane, yeah. where you had this totally distorted guitar, but yet the lo- the lyrical lines were beautiful. And, and again, I've only experienced mm-hmm. this track one time. Yeah. But it's very beautiful, but it's also very heavy and very... Um, Anthemic, a lot of the great qualities you think of of some of the greatest of 70 rock yeah. songs. But you're right, there is more of a contemporary energy and feel to it as well. Very 90s grunge, in my opinion. And I also, there was a section in the middle there, like close to the end, a little jam section, which, while not sounding like it, reminded me of the closing of. I want you. She's so heavy by the Beatles. Uh huh. Okay. And I don't know if you heard that. Yeah. Or no. Not. I can. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna listen to it again. But I could hear that. Yeah. yeah. I mean that. I could see that. That being a part of the listening experience. It reminds me of it, but it doesn't sound exactly like it. Or it's just. I don't know what it was. I'm gonna have to exp- re- listen to it again and maybe examine it a little more mm-hmm. closely, analyze it a little bit more closely. And uh, so, yeah, very startling track. I really like this one a lot, and it comes close to knocking. The Cold Wind, which so oh, far yeah. has been my favorite track, it comes mm-hmm. it comes closest to yeah. knocking that one off. I'll tell you, as my favorite track. I mean, you listen to this and you're like, "Wow, where did it come from?" But it's just, yeah. just it's startling and spectacular to yeah. hear it. It was, you know, and and again, I, I, you know, it's easy to get maybe over enthusiastic, but you know, I don't think our our first reaction here is mm-hmm. is a miss. I think what we're hearing is re- really great. Is a great song. I think if after we listen to these more, we'll have more nuanced views. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about my initial reactions here. We're going to go to track 10. Yeah, which, which uh, finishes out the album. And yeah. let's go ahead and check out a little bit of Anthem and then we'll come back and talk about that sure. one and our, some final thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we just finished listening to track 10, which is Anthem. This is the closing track on the album. This was also an advanced track. Right. And my, I remember you texted me about it, and your reaction was very strong to mm-hmm. it. Um, and I love it more now than even on this listen than I have previously. Just a great song. I have to admit I'm liking it more, too. My initial reaction wasn't as strong, but now that I'm hearing it again in context with the rest of the album, my reaction is very strong. This also is startling in that it is also... Not as Zeppelin-like, right. but very 70s-like, and even very 60s-like. And I would say uh, this song, let me back up. You mentioned one track that you felt had a certain sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. I think this song has a real sense of sweetness mm-hmm. to it. Um, and an, a very unapologetic mm-hmm. sense of sweetness to it. Uh, an earnestness to it. Yeah. Yeah. I like what the, it's trying to say, at least what I think yeah. it's trying to say. Um, that you know we have to all we have to at some point we all have to just agree to disagree right right and I like that line that the world is only what the world is made of it's very you yeah. too like yeah those it is yeah that's well said yeah, yeah. it is yeah just a and, and like you said it's very beautiful and sincere and it doesn't sound anything like you two at all no but it does have that kind of it, it draws a similarity in terms of the spirit mm-hmm. and of kind of where the band is taking you emotionally yeah you know initially I think. I would have thought that 
Brave New World, the tr- previous track, when I f- when this track anthem first started, I kind of thought that it was a bit anticlimactic after uh-huh. Brave New World, uh-huh. which was so incredibly climactic. Right. But I, and after hearing it now in context, I would almost say Brave New World is the climax of this mm-hmm. album, and Anthem is the epilogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I would put it now. Yeah, that I've I to don't it again. disagree with that. And yeah, I really am enjoying this track a whole lot more. Yeah. This is the most I've enjoyed yeah. it since first hearing it as yeah. a. Yeah, it's single. really nice. Some of the the the, the choir vocals and stuff. I like and, the addition of the choir. And you know what I like about some of the choir vocals is you know there's a point where um, and, and of course like I said we just heard it once but where where Josh is singing and then his voice kind of goes down in the mix and the choir artfully comes up. rises and it's just really beautiful the way yeah. that works with everything going on and like you said it's just a real it, it's a surprise because like I said at the beginning of the album you it does draw comparisons with that signature sound of Led Zeppelin mm-hmm. but by the al- time of the album closes you're saying you know what uh, Greta Van Fleet um, has a lot going on an anthem of the peaceful army mm-hmm. is like kind of yeah, it has that foot in the past with what they've done, but it's also very much of a step forward for the mm-hmm. band. Yeah. And I'm very excited to to get to know this album better, but also what what's what's going to lie ahead for the group as well. So you're definitely feeling the album. Oh yeah, I'm definitely feel, feeling. I am this too. Is a great album. I'm certainly going to go out and buy this one on CD uh-huh. for sure. I may even buy it on vinyl. Yeah. Depending, I'll have to see where where it's how it is priced at. Um, but I may even pick it up on vinyl at this point. Yeah, yeah, I can't blame you for that. So I, I think now what I would be a great thing is to hear what everybody else has to say about the album. It's going to be out on Friday. Um, we're two days ahead of, ahead of it at this point. But um, tell us what you think once you've heard the album and give us your thoughts. And I don't know, Robert, maybe we will come back after we've yeah. had a chance to hear it more and talk a bit more nuanced about it. Yeah. Maybe we will. Yeah. If yeah, we feel we have yeah. something worth saying. Exactly. I know I'll be listening to it a few times over the weekend, you know, uh, uh, over the next few days, so that in my next print column, which mm-hmm. runs in about a week, I can have an in-depth review. Because overall, and you know, probably not actually as many words as we've been talking about here, mm-hmm. but then I've had a chance to listen to it, and then when we come back together, yeah. we can both be, yeah. you know, have probably some more insight that we about the album yeah. and about some of our favorite tracks. Yeah, and um, where can people check out your column? Uh, well, the, it's always posted on musicworthbuying.com. Great. Great. Okay. So, um, anyways, though. So, yeah. I guess that. I guess we're both uh, feeling pretty positive yeah. about it. We've. I've had a few critical things to say, but like I said, let's see what happens after I've heard it a few more times. And overall, I'm feeling very strong. Yeah. Giving it a real thumbs up. I, yeah. You are too. Oh obviously. yeah. You're definitely giving it a thumbs up. Tell us what you think, everybody, and tell us what you think of this format. Uh, just listening to it and giving our first impressions right after we listen to the songs. Uh, maybe we'll do this again. Yeah. This is the first time we've done this. And uh, as always, if you like what we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. And also, if you want to help us make more videos, please go to the Patreon page. As little as $1 a month will make a huge difference. And everybody, thank you so much again for watching. Bye-bye. Bye.